pack your bags because we're headed to a cabin in the woods in today's movie. Welcome to Sick Flicks, where I take a deep dive into the cinematic sewer to help you embrace your inner gore geek. I'm Mike Bracken, aka The Horror Geek, and today we're looking at Sam Raimi's feature film debut, The Evil Dead. Released in 1981, The Evil Dead basically launched the Cabin in the Woods subgenre, created an entire fictional universe, and made star Bruce Campbell a cult film icon. No lie, The Evil Dead universe includes movies, TV series, a reboot movie, comics, video games, and more. Not too shabby for a film made by a bunch of kids running around in the woods. Today, we'll take a punny look at the film that started it all. Can the Evil Dead deliver enough splatter to fill five barf bags? Let's get to the gore and find out. Oh, and before we get rolling, today's episode is brought to you by patrons Aspen, Charles Grabowski, sorry if I butchered that, and Alex Falls. If you want to support the show, you'll find links in the description and pinned comment below. We fade in on this foggy swamp. Kinda looks like my backyard. To get this shot, they put Sam Raimi in a boat with a camera while Bruce Campbell pushed him through the water. It's just one of many ways Raimi got cool shots with no budget. Then we jump to our heroes, out for a little road trip. Letters from Paris last year, well you've been gone six months and I got the fear of... Ash here is like, I'm not sure what's worse here, her singing or my bowl cut. The 1973 Oldsmobile Delta 88 has become a Raimi staple over the years. It was the director's first car and turns up somewhere in pretty much all of his films. Hey, uh, Ash, where are we? Awesome. They're already lost and Ash is basically using a kid's menu from Shoney's as a map. I'm sure this trip is gonna go great. Says here we should have turned left at Clean Platesville. We're never gonna make it to Dessert Land now. Then they narrowly avoid dying in this head-on collision. <laughs> Thank God Scotty found the wheel to live. They drive on, and here's your Sam Raimi and Rob Tappert cameos. I'll go to hell. I'm not honking at you. Scotty is a sophisticated man. How do we know this? Because he's drinking his moonshine right out of a canning jar. Well, that or he's taking a urine sample. Could go either way. After some more jibber jabber, they finally arrive. Damn it, this place looks nothing like the photos on Airbnb. But hey, it's got a self rocking porch swing. That's pretty swanky. Oh great, now it's broken too. Worst weekend ever. They head in, but it looks like Cheech and Chong are already here. While they're unpacking, Scott checks the place out. Well, the advertised hot tub is just a moonshine barrel filled with swamp water, but the place does have its very own murder shed. Everything's coming up Millhouse. Back inside, Cheryl's doing some drawing, and since this is a sketch of a clock, you could say it's about time. She's interrupted when the Amway people show up. No, I will not join your MLM. Christ, you're not even safe out here in the woods. At any rate, she's done with her clock drawing, so now she's sketching this weird book. <laughs> I don't know, this probably isn't going to get her a scholarship at art instruction schools. Probably should have just stuck with Tippy the Turtle. <laughs> Look at her face. She's like, yeah, this stinks. It stinks. Later at dinner, Ash proposes a toast. The liver is evil and must be punished. That's interrupted when this happens. I'm sure it was just wind or a gas buildup. Scott's not buying it. <laughs> that is the stupidest thing I ever heard of. Well, okay, Scott. You got a better idea? No need to be a dick about it. And since this is a horror movie, we better do the smart thing and head down there to investigate. At least he didn't say I'll be right back. Back in a minute. Oh, wait. Ash heads down next. Sweet, it's where they shot the end of the Blair Witch Project. Scott's probably just hanging out in the corner. One thing you can always say about Bruce Campbell. Dude always leads with the chin. Ash keeps exploring and eventually wanders right into this jump scare. Here's the infamous Hills Have Eyes poster, which was a little back and forth thing Raimi and Wes Craven had going for years. Each would put a nod to the other's films in their own work. It's one of those great little inside joke things most people miss. And they find the boomstick. This baby's S-Mart's top of the line. Shop smart. Shop as smart. But even more importantly, they find this sweet book. Oh god. Look at this. And a dagger? Man, this is the coolest basement ever. This kind of looks like your old girlfriend. <laughs> Settle down, Scott. I'm making the jokes here. Back upstairs, Ash decides to liven things up with this audio recording. It is entitled, Naturan de Manto. Roughly translated, Book of the Dead. The book is bound in human flesh and inked in human blood. He's like, I probably shouldn't have picked that up without gloves. 
But wait, it gets worse. It is through recitation of these passages that the demons are given license to possess the living. Cheryl, meanwhile, wants to hear something she can dance to. Dear Mano, man sees on Hazan so far. Man, this new Osmonds death metal album is lit. Hurry sounds amazing. Do you kids even remember the Osmonds? Christ, I'm old. Cheryl, meanwhile, is basically me every time someone starts playing some new country. She runs off, and Ash chastises Scott for his inconsiderate behavior. Look, man, I told you if you played Red Solo Cup, she'd run screaming from the room. Why you gotta be such a dick? Later on, Ash is ready to make his move. Man, I sure hope that's not a dick in a box, because if it is, Ash really is all chin. Then we get this homage to Lucio Fulci. Although is it really a Fulci homage if no one gets their eyes gouged out at the end? Oh, oh Ash, you got me an engagement magnifying glass on a chain? You shouldn't have. No really, I hate it. I wanted a ring. I mean, it's great, now I'll be able to read the fine print on things, I guess. He makes his move, but look out, there are peeper deadites out in the woods. <laughs> Meh, they're boring. Let's see what Cheryl's up to. She heads outside like an idiot. Is anybody out there? Christ, is she going on a hike or what? She realizes she's not alone when these vines make their move. This is definitely not Vine and Dandy. But wait, it's gonna get worse. I don't think this was the kind of wilderness retreat she was expecting. Then the forest has its way with her in one of Evil Dead's most infamous scenes. I gotta say, this is some pretty rough treatment. Luckily for her, she's able to shrub it off and flee back to the cabin. But look out, there's a slow-moving supernatural menace right on her tail. This is another example of Raimi's ingenuity. They shot these scenes by mounting a camera on a board. One guy carried each end as they ran through the woods. Or maybe briskly walk through the woods is more accurate. After a lot of rumbling, stumbling, and tumbling, she makes it back and tells everyone what happened. They act like it's a case of moss hysteria. Sure, there's nothing out there. Trees do not attack people. Ashley! Except for Linda, who's like, that sounds like a tremendously terrible experience. Am I out of tree puns yet? I don't believe so. Ash offers to take her back to town, but the bridge is out. Broken bridges annoy me. I just can't get over them. Back at the cabin, Ash is listening to the movie on tape version of the film for some exposition. I fear that the only way to stop those possessed by the spirits of the book is through the act of bodily dismemberment. I will say, I like where this is headed. While she's doing that, Linda and Shelley recreate this scene from Ghostbusters. It's a seven. What suit? Um, diamonds. Uh, no, no, wait, um, hearts. Oh my god, seven of hearts, you're right! <laughs> Shelley's no Peter Venkman. No, I don't know, but I think it's really some sort of extra sense or something, you know, like ESP? Okay. Except Cheryl really is psychic. Four of hearts, eight of spades. And possessed. Why have you disturbed our sleep? And a ventriloquist, apparently. Her lips never move. You will die! Like the others before you. And then she collapses, like timber. See your eyes? Sure, Linda, let's talk about her eyes, not the fact that she was fucking levitating. Way to focus. Turns out she's playing possum and she stabs Linda right in the ankle with a pencil. <laughs> she's gonna need to get the lead out. Then she gives her a taste of her pimp hand. <laughs> Ash is pinned under this book rack. Hope there's a shelf help section under there because he's gonna need it. Before she can get to him, Scott's like, excuse me, but I'm gonna have to butt in. And then he locks her in the basement. Afterwards, Ash heads to check up on Linda. Let me give you some sugar, baby. Also, that magnifying glass necklace is gonna be super useful for helping you get all the pencil shards out of your ankle. Wasn't such a bad gift after all. Try doing that with a ring. Back in the living room, Shelly puts on this masterclass in acting. For God's sake, what happened to her eyes? 
Again, look at her. Her eyes are the least of her issues. Nothing a little cataract surgery can't fix. After that, Shelly gets snatched like a purse. Scott doesn't seem too worried about it, though. Eh, well, plenty of other fish in the sea and all that. He heads for the head, and why are this bathroom's walls basically covered in plastic? What kind of movies were they making out here? And long hair, short hair. Continuity is hard. In Raimi's defense, they had to do a lot of reshoots to finish the film. It was going to be hard to keep everything exactly the same. Scott's about to head out, but he gets snatched next. Nailed it. He's got her in the bear hug, then he tosses her on the fire. Which is fitting since they met on Match.com. Then he yanks her out. Yeah, I think she's done. Don't want to overcook her. Things then turn into a handicap match. By God, she's setting him up for the choke slam. Yeah, my Jim Ross impression still sucks. Scott asks her to lend him a hand, and she's all too happy to oblige. Then he stabs her in the back with it. She was cooking earlier, but now she's smoking. Is she finally dead? Have you ever seen a horror movie? Of course she's not. She reaches out to touch Scott, but he's gone full lumberjack with that axe. Yeah, that escalated quickly. <laughs> yeah, YouTube is going to demonetize me if I show him dismembering her. But the good news is, there are 14 billion versions of the Evil Dead you can buy. And really, you probably already own six of them at least. Afterwards, Scott's like, man, she really went to pieces. And now they've got to get rid of the remains. It's sort of like Little House on the Barry. With the funeral over, Scott's had enough. He's out of here. She's your girlfriend, you take care of her. I'm getting the hell out of here, right now. <laughs> what a pal. Oh hey, remember Linda? Yeah, she's still in this movie and is apparently Rip Van Winkle because she slept through a full-on axe murder in the living room. But hey, her foot looks great. And now she's a deadite too. <laughs> and here comes a jump scare, because Scott is back. <laughs> Guess he was gone a long time because his hair grew out again. Scott offers up some dire exposition. There's a way. The trail. But the trees, Ash. Hey, no. Then Ash gives Linda a taste of his pimp hand. <laughs> a lot of pimp hands in this movie. Linda's unfazed. That all you got? I've been hit harder by stiff competition. Ash is ready to blast her in the face. Hell yeah. No, not like that, you pervs, with the shotgun. Then she turns back into regular Linda. Oh, Ash, help me, please. If you guess this is all a ruse, no screenwriter's credit for you. I mean, come on, that shit's obvious. We have academic standards here. <laughs> See? Told you. And now he's like, it's time to take out the trash. Back inside, Scott's dead, and Ash lollygags his way right into this jump scare. <laughs> Linda cuts his arm like her name is Slice T, and this is an episode of Law and Order, Slicing Victims Unit. They battle it out, and Linda winds up with a knife in her back. <laughs> Hope he kept the receipt for that necklace. Then he takes her out to the murder shed for a little chainsaw massacre. But young Ash isn't the hardened deadite slayer he'd become. He totally wimps out and decides to bury her instead. She won't stay dead though. I'm really bored of this, Linda. Would you just die already? He's laying the lumber, but that's not even slowing her down. So he decapitates her with the shovel. I dig it. Back inside, things are even worse. Cheryl's out of the basement. Ash eventually winds up in the cellar where the pipes are bleeding. Here's blood in your eye. After some more cat and mouse, Cheryl makes her move. And then surprise, Scott's a dead eye too. He goes down after an eye gouge, and yeah, blame YouTube for me not showing it. But here comes Cheryl. Scott's pulling Ash's leg, but he's trying to fish up the Book of the Dead with the magnifying glass necklace. But Cheryl's all ready to play some poker. Looks like she's got a straight. Just as things look their bleakest, Ash manages to grab the book and toss it in the fire. <laughs> I think this is one instance of book burning we can all get behind. 
And just like that, Cheryl and Scott turn into a modern English song and melt with you. It's a really lo-fi effect, but that's part of the charm. And that's a happy ending, right? I mean, aside from everyone but Ash being dead. Battered and bloody, Ash heads out into the safety of a new day, except... It's easy to see why The Evil Dead is one of horror's most beloved cult films. It delivers in a way that films with ten times the budget rarely do. While many cite the first film as their least favorite of the trilogy, it's always been the one I love the most. Oh, I love Bruce's zaniness in Dead by Dawn, and Army of Darkness is part of this very set, but the first film is a straight horror film, and it's a pretty damn effective one. Plus, Raimi was barely 20 when he started production. 20 years old, and he made Evil Dead. At 20, I was busy trying to figure out how not to get carded buying vodka. It's also clear why Raimi went on to a mainstream Hollywood career, and why Bruce Campbell has become everyone's favorite character actor. The magic is already visible here. All they did was work at getting better as time went on. I wish Raimi would return to his splatter roots in the same way I wish Peter Jackson would, but even if that never happens, we'll always have the Evil Dead franchise. I think it's safe to say that the Evil Dead is pretty splattery, but can it earn the coveted 5 barf bag rating? Let's go to the gore card! In terms of gross anatomy, the Evil Dead over delivers. We're treated to a pencil in the ankle, melting deadites, full on deadite dismemberment, a decapitation, and a brutal eye gouging. The effects are gooey and low budget, which only adds to their charm. This is a wet little film, and because of that, I'm proud to give The Evil Dead a perfect 5 barf bag rating. This is definitely a sick flick. Looking for more Raimi-esque splatter? Then check out my review of Supermarket Slasher Intruder. You'll find a link here on the screen. I'll meet you over there. Until next time, I'm Mike Bracken, aka The Horror Geek, bringing you all the splatter that matters. <laughs> Pack your bags, because, whoa. He's laying the lumber, so that... Ah, uh, first day with the new tongue. Back inside, Cheryl's doing some drawing. And since it's a sca- He fell English? That's impossible. It's also clear why Raimi went on to a mainstream Hollywood career and why- Oh my god, who writes this crap?